Welcome everyone. This is lecture 59 of this series on fluids and electrolytes. The series is based on my book, Manual Fluid Electrolyte and Acid-Based Disorders, A Pathophysiologic Approach to Common Clinical Problems. I'm Dr. Mohamed Tinawi. I'm a nephrologist in Northwest Indiana. You can find the book at the link below. It's on Amazon. We are still on chapter 8, metabolic acidosis. Today we'll start our discussion of non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. Let's talk about the causes of non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. We have extrarenal causes such as diarrhea, use or abuse of laxatives, and urethral diversions. We have renal causes such as advanced chronic kidney disease. Here you need estimated GFR below 20, so stages 4 and 5 chronic kidney disease, and a big category of renal tubular acidosis. You have certain medications like carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, such as acetazolamide, topiramate, the use of uh, total parenteral nutrition, TPN, and the use of saline, but has to be large volume. So these are the main causes. Now, let's talk about renal tubular acidosis. I'm going to approach this complex topic from different angles, and I'm going to repeat the information time and again, so uh, hopefully, finally, you'll have a good grasp on this subject. So renal tubular acidosis, you can look at it as either hypokalemic or hyperkalemic. If it is hypokalemic, it can be type 2 or type 1. Type 2 is proximal which is due to loss of bicarbonate. So because of loss of bicarbonate, we have intact distal acidification, meaning urine ammonium is normal, meaning we have a negative urine anion gap, which is the same you would get with diarrhea. So that's a normal situation because NH4 ammonium is normal. This is not the case with distal type 1 renal tubular acidosis. Here, by definition, we have impaired renal acidification. So the distal acidification, the NH4 is impaired. The excretion has declined. So you have a positive urine anion gap. Additionally, you have nephrocalcinosis and nephrolithiasis. So these are very characteristic of distal type 1 RTA. Now, if you have RTA, but you have hyperkalemia, we call it what? Hyperkalemic RTA. Now, here we have two types, either voltage-dependent, some people call it hyperkalemic distal RTA, and we have type 4 RTA, which is due to aldosterone deficiency or resistance. This is a very general overview. We're going to go into that in much more details. So, uh, let's look at the causes uh, with more uh, specificity. So, we have chronic diarrhea, laxative abuse, but any GI loss due to biliary or pancreatic secretions, high output GI fistulae, sometimes you have that, urethral diversion, whether it's urethrosigmoidostomy or ileal conduit, sometimes we see that, toluene toxicity due to glue or pain sniffing because you have excess of benzoate or hippurate. This will give you non-anion gap acidosis. Please note that if you have impaired renal function, you're going to have retention of uh, benzoate and hippurate, and you will have an anion gap. But if renal function is intact, these uh, metabolites will be uh, quickly excreted with sodium and potassium, and uh, you will not have an anion gap. Medications, like we said, carbonic anhydrase inhibitors, topiramate and acetazolamide, total parenteral nutrition solutions because you're giving a lot of amino acids. Uh, other causes not very common, calcium chloride uh, administration, arginine chloride, uh, ammonium chloride, and sulfur. Now, if you give saline uh, due to uh, diffusion, and I will explain that more in the, the very last chapter, um, you can have uh, non-anion gap metabolic acidosis due to these chloride-rich solutions, but the amount of infusion has to be excessive. Post-hypocapnic state because of the renal compensation, so uh, you're going here to have non-anion gap acidosis because the kidneys have not caught up with the pulmonary correction yet. Uh, recovery from diabetic ketoacidosis because now the, the kidneys are working and you're excreting all these uh, uh, ketones with sodium and potassium. So the anion gap initially from these uh, uh, ketone bodies uh, will be gone because everything is excreted in the urine and chloride will be left behind. Um, advanced chronic kidney disease, again, stage 4 and 5, can give you non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. And like we said a minute ago, RTAs. So we can have RTA with hypokalemia, which is type 
2 or 1, proximal or distal, or it can be hyperkalemic, voltage-dependent, and type 4 RTA. Please remember that if you have advanced chronic kidney disease, or if you have type 1 distal RTA, or hyperkalemic RTA, in all of these categories, you have impaired distal acidification, meaning you have problems with urine ammonia, meaning you probably will have a positive urine anion gap. The only exception to this rule of renal tubular acidosis is proximal or type 2 RTA. In that case, you are going to have a negative urine anion gap, the same like you would have with diarrhea. And don't worry, I'm going to repeat that again and again. Now, like we said, we have renal causes and extra renal causes. Renal causes, we said we have uh, distal RTA and hyperkalemic RTA. We have impaired distal acidification, meaning low production of ammonia. And uh, here, in case of proximal RTA, the problem is you don't have adequate bicarbonate reabsorption, but distal acidification is intact. Production of ammonium is intact, so therefore the, pa the patient can acidify their urine, and uh, you have a, a urine anion gap that is uh, negative. Chronic diarrhea is the most common extrarenal cause, like we said. If we measure, if we can measure, it's not easy, urine uh, ammonium, we can distinguish distant and hyperkalemic RTA from other causes, from extrarenal causes. But like I said, you cannot distinguish diarrhea from proximal RTA because in both cases, an H4 is adequate and you have negative anion gap. You need history and context. Um, like I said, um, I'm repeating already, uh, urine in H4 is low in distal renal tubular acidosis, in hyperkalemic renal tubular acidosis, whether it's voltage dependent or type 4 RDA, and uh, it's also low in advanced chronic kidney disease, so non-anion gap acidosis due to advanced chronic kidney disease, while it is normal in renal tubular acidosis and can be even high with diarrhea and extra renal causes. Now, uh, like I said, patients with calorie toxicity initially will have non-anion gap metabolic acidosis because hippurate is quickly excreted along with benzoate as a sodium or potassium salt. But people with impaired kidney function will retain these metabolite and these become unmeasured anion and you will have anion gap metabolic acidosis. Patients with diabetic ketoacidosis, same thing. Initially, you have anion gap acidosis, but when you excrete these salts with sodium and potassium, uh, then you don't have uh, the anion gap anymore. Uh, chronic non-anion gap acidosis is bad because it can cause bone disease, uh, muscle wasting, and even progression of chronic kidney disease and impaired growth in children. Now, uh, the extra renal uh, causes, like I said, the main ones are chronic diarrhea and laxative uh, abuse. You have loss of sodium bicarbonate in intestinal secretions. Subsequently, you have hypovolemia. The kidneys will increase absorption of sodium chloride and increase urine ammonium uh, uh, excretion. Now, how do we make the diagnosis? Well, you have the history. It's uh, fairly straightforward. If you have diarrhea, you have hypokalemia, you have non-anion gap metabolic acidosis. When you uh, obtain the uh, urine electrolytes, you can uh, calculate urine uh, anion gap, and it is negative because uh, ammonium excretion is adequate. Urine pH is variable, but it can be over 6 because you have increase in uh, urine ammonium excretion. Um, laxative abuse requires a high index of uh, suspicion, and it's definitely more common than renal tubular acidosis, proximal or distal. So um, you have to really uh, inquire about that. Patients with non-anion gap metabolic acidosis due to diarrhea may require both alkali and potassium replacement, like I said, especially if the underlying cause cannot be uh, mitigated. Now, I am going to end here next lecture. We're going to talk about renal tubular acidosis. See you then.